Hello, grade 12 uh, psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson seven, biological motives here. Uh, so we're gonna talk about mostly hunger in this one, but all the biological motives that we're gonna list uh, kind of work the same way. We need to stop them. Okay, so biological motives. Our biological needs are critical to our survival and physical well-being. Did you know that you need to eat, sleep, and drink water? Uh, the nervous system is constructed in such a way that dramatic variations in blood sugar, water, oxygen, salt, vitamins, minerals lead to changes in behavior uh, designed to return the body to a condition of chemical balance. Essentially what this is saying here is that there are things that occur in the human body that throw us off balance and we want to bring them back to balance and we engage in behaviors that are observable um, when we are trying to bring these things, among others, back into balance. Blood sugar, water, oxygen, salt, essential vitamins and minerals, all of these things cause us to change our behaviors when we lack them. Uh, when your body temperature drops below a certain point, you start to shiver. Certain blood vessels constrict in your fingers and in your toes and in your legs. You put more uh, clothes on. These are all uh, actions that we take, behaviors that we take, uh, due to this biology, uh, biological motive of keeping us warm. All these activities reduce heat loss and bring body temperature back to the correct level, essentially into balance, homeostasis. If your body heat rises above a certain point, you start to sweat, blood vessels dilate in your fingers and toes, uh, in your armpits, uh, you start to remove clothes. These processes cool you, so biological motives cause us to change our behavior in some way to either, you know, if we're talking about temperature, raise our temperature or lower our temperature. We're gonna focus on hunger a little bit here. What motivates you to seek food? Uh, often we eat because of the sight and smell of say a pizza that tempts you into a restaurant. You know, oh man, that pizza looks good, let's grab a slice. Other times you eat out of habit because you always have lunch at 12.30 and it's 12.30 now and I'm hungry or you eat at noon because it's sociable. That's when all your friends eat. That's when your coworkers eat. Uh, that's when everyone goes to the lunchroom and everyone invites you out for a snack at that time. Um, so you might eat because of any of those reasons, but you might not eat because you're working frantically to finish a paper. Um, you don't have any food, so you just ignore the fact that it's lunch and you just keep on working right through till maybe two o'clock when that hunger becomes a little bit more uh, overwhelming. So different things can cause you to seek food. It doesn't have to just be hungry. It can be uh, sights and smells, the time of day, the people that you're with, the activities that you're partaking in at the time. All of those can cause you to eat. Uh, the portion of the hypothalamus, uh, essentially a portion of the brain called the lateral hypothalamus, is stimulated with electrodes, uh, a laboratory animal will begin to eat even if it has just eaten. And if you remove this part of the brain surgically, the animal will stop eating and will eventually die of starvation. So essentially what that tells us is that no matter what we are talking about with the motivations to eat, that comes from the lateral hypothalamus. If it's not there, you don't eat, and if it's stimulated, you do. Doesn't matter anything else. So the, the lateral hypothalamus provides the signals that tell you when to eat. No matter what you are doing uh, or the reasons that you're eating, it's coming from the lateral hypothalamus. Uh, some psychosocial factors that might cause us to eat. Uh, this would be key point three. So psychosocial uh, hunger factors are external cues that can affect eating. They are not internal cues like I'm hungry uh, or I need energy or I need to raise this nutrient. Um, they can affect when, where, how much you eat, what you eat. They're cues like smell. Uh, if smell if smells pizza or uh, cookies, maybe you will eat that. The appearance of food, like if chips appear on the table, you're more likely to snack than to go and buy chips. You don't actually want them. Uh, when other people are eating, we tend to eat more. If you go to a restaurant and people around you are eating, um, you may choose not to eat because of social pre pressures as well. If you want to look like an Instagram model, uh, if you want to look thin, if you have that, you know, image in your brain that like eating causes you to look fat, which is not correct. 
by the way. But if that's what you think, uh, then that can cause you not to eat. Um, so like many different things can cause you to eat or not eat, not just being hungry or being full. Sometimes when you're bored, you eat. I know that I do that, munch away on something. You eat popcorn at a movie because that's what you do when you're at a movie. You eat a sandwich at lunch because it's lunchtime, not necessarily because you are craving a sandwich or you're very, very hungry, but you know that you don't have time to eat between 1 and 3.30. Psychosocial factors have a huge impact on our eating habits. Uh, essentially, society has told us when to eat and how much to eat. Uh, and sometimes this can contribute to eating disorders, whether you should eat or shouldn't eat. Um, binge eating, um, eating when you're depressed or not eating enough at all. These are all affected by our society or psycho psychosocial factors. Uh, we have an example here uh, of our rat. This is the rat that they stimulated the hypothalamus until he was just uh, monstrous. You can call this torture if you want, and I would agree, but there you go. You have um, a rat with a damaged hypothalamus, so it just eats and eats and eats. So the demonstration there, look at his little face. Oh boy. And here we have just a little diagram of some biological needs. So we talked mostly about food for a biological need, but water, oxygen, sleep, avoiding pain, these are all biological needs that can cause us to uh, act in a certain way or not act in a certain way. Uh, what we're gonna talk about next lesson is social needs. So this is a bunch of social needs. The need to excel, the need to bond with others, um, the new the need for orderliness or cleanliness the need to have fun relax and to be entertained so although biological needs here play a large part in our actions social needs might even play a larger part in our actions we have some important terms for you and then some research for you to do about hunger but if you have any questions about any of that please feel free to let me know uh, and thanks so much for watching everyone I will see you soon